this is Intoxicated Literature. Hello! Welcome to Intoxicated Literature. I am Daniela Drake. And I'm Evelyn Crow. And tonight we are talking about Nettle and Bone by T. King Kingfisher. Who's also Ursula Vernon. Yes, and who I followed on Twitter forever, actually, and I've never read any of their stuff because I thought it was all horror. (laughs) And I don't read horror, just as a rule. Yeah. So I have never read any of their stuff. And I'm so glad (laughs) I read this. Uh, Yeah, so what are we drinking? We we are doing themed drinks like we talked about, I think, a couple episodes ago. (laughs) Because apparently I get ideas when I drink and then just forget about them. So... (laughs) <laughs> what, are you, what are you drinking, Evelyn? I am drinking Witch's Brew, which is Midori uh, tequila. I think Ooh. there's tequila in this. Um, pineapple juice and a splash of lemon juice. Ooh, it is it is very bright lime green. It is. It looks like Witch's Brew. It does. It does. Yes. yes. I uh, made up a concoction with the help of my boyfriend, and we call it Bluebeard because which is fitting. It's just, it's fitting. I mean, this is yeah. definitely, Bluebeard is a theme in this, in this it novel. It feels Bluebeard inspired. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, Trader Joe's cookie butter liqueur, because I freaking love that stuff. It's, yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. Amaretto, oat milk, and a little bit of blue car- carousel? Uh-huh. Car- car- carousel? 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 Mm-hmm. I think there's okay. an accent on there. I, I think. think so, too. So, okay, blue carousel on the top, and it kind of, like, dribbles down so it looks like a beard. We put egg whites so there's foam. Yeah, it was very fancy. Obviously, he made it, and I did not. He is quite the bartender, and he makes all of our <laughs> holiday drinks. So yes, he makes, makes all of my drinks because I'm useless. <laughs> <laughs> Left to my own devices, I'm like, this would be great, and I just start pouring stuff in, and it is not great, let me tell you. <laughs> I had to make my own drink, so... <laughs> You well, yes, but you made a you made a super batch. I did. I have a mixing cup full of this, <laughs> so I can just pour into my little cocktail glass here as it's, I drink. It's impressive. It's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite the electric green. It really so, is. It really is. But I figure the dust wife is almost a witch. No, I agree. I like. I would. I was trying to think of witch drinks that I could make because I was like, that makes sense. There's spell casting of the kind, like necromancer. Yeah. Yeah. It counts. It counts. Also, okay, so okay. trigger warnings for spoilers. We yes. are going to talk about the entire book, beginning to end and all the in-betweens. Yep. And I use, I use profanity yes. a lot. Yes, we swear like sailors. So if that offends you, please don't listen to us. So let's get, let's get going. Um, overall impressions... Of this book. Hmm. I liked it a lot. I did too. I really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorites, I think, actually, which is funny because when I first read it, as I was reading it, I was kind of like, okay, all right. Because it's not, I would say it's a lower fantasy. It's not huge stakes, right? Uh, There is definitely dark themes. There's definitely violence. There's definitely gore. But it still feels weirdly cozy (laughs) and i don't know how she manages that dealing with the stuff that she's dealing with um but after i finished it i thought about it for weeks like i would it would just like kind of rattle around in my brain and i was like wow that was the closest book i can think of that makes me think of it is uprooted yes yes it it feels the same except one is more ya than this one if this one doesn't feel quite as ya no this one does not feel ya um, it is in the same thematic sense with the coziness. Yeah. Yeah, I agree where it's dealing with kind of darker themes and and kind of not great mm-hmm. things are happening, but there's enough humor and there's enough I don't know, like the characters are so con- like kind and good, which I think is a staple of kind of, kind of the cozy genre that I think that it, it just gives that vibe of, like, you know, reinforces your your faith in humanity a little bit. I really enjoyed it a lot. I liked the world building. The characters especially they were, also were good. so good. Also good. Also good. Mara is a 30-something spare princess. 
and she is just like she's left to a, a convent she's like you're just gonna live in a convent for a while we don't need you like we're oh, just gonna then she's like, the shelf until no we one need else, you no one else is saying this no one else no one else is saying the problems here everyone else is just okay with this I know. we're just okay with this I know. Uh, I'm not okay with this uh, Earl needs to die yeah <laughs> uh, yep yep pretty much pretty much pretty much yep 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 um and it's interesting too because like the beginning of the book it kind of drops us in the middle of the story because she's already gone to the dust wife she's already said listen i need something that'll kill a prince because he's abusing my sister so what do you got and the dust wife is like okay do these three impossible things and sends her on her way because she thinks Oh my god! There's no way I'm gonna see this woman again. She got, she got, she got back with the bone dog. So she like literally, she comes back. She literally (laughs) almost ruins her hands making this bone dog out of cursed bones and wire. Her hands are not functional practically at this point. She goes back to the dust wife. The dust wife opens the door and is like, "The fuck? Yeah. How did this work? You weren't supposed to be able to do this. I didn't think you'd come back." Yeah. I thought you'd give up. This was an impo- What do you think I meant when I said this was an impossible task? <laughs> like, literally, she asks her this question. What yeah. do you think it means when I say impossible task? And Mara's like, that it's hard. <laughs> She's like, don't you just- This was just a test to make sure I really meant it, that I really needed to do this thing. <laughs> and the dust wife is literally, I can just see her just rubbing her forehead like, oh, my God. And so Mara's like, well, okay, well, what do I need to do to catch moonlight in this jar? Yeah. And the dust wife is like, okay, okay, you've already done these two things. She's like, Open hand, this me, jar. hand me that jar right there. Open this jar. Yeah. And so Mara opens it up, and there's moonlight in it. She's like, okay, close the jar. So she closes it, and she's like, okay, it's caught moonlight in a jar. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love it. And Mara's like looking at her like, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> much (laughs) but i love it too okay let's backtrack a little bit because okay so so it drops us in the middle of the scene Mm -hmm. it drops us in the middle of the story which is interesting to me because especially with like fairy tale stories it's about the journey so like not starting at the beginning was such an interesting choice and at first (sighs) i didn't love it like it took me a while to like kind of like figure out what was going on and, and get into it but I mean, not that long. It was like a chapter. And I was like, no, I'm in it. This is good. Uh, you know, because this is how I write stories, though. This is literally how I write stories. My beginnings are always like this. When I start something, it is always in the middle of the action. I do not. I like to start with, like, the decision of, oh, I have I have to do this thing. Like, this is where, this is, okay, I'm doing it. I'm going to do it. It was an interesting choice. But, like, then it cuts, it kind of intercuts with her childhood and how all of these events came to pass and how she ends up sewing a cloak from nettles and building a dog out of bones <laughs> because such a weird thing to do and you're like why do you need these things this is so weird Mara spends a lot of her life being told that what she does is not okay yeah. her mother is saying you're not political yeah. enough her sister is saying you have she's to be quiet. Very, but which is funny to me because she's so shy and reserved she and, is. Yes. and unsure of herself for so much of the, of her yes. childhood. Like she does not, she is not comfortable. Well, even yep. at the convent, she goes to try to clean out stalls and stuff. And the nuns are like, what are you doing? She's like, I gotta do something. She's I know like, you don't. I can't like, yeah, just sit I do. around. I'm yeah. literally just sitting here. So she spends a lot of her time being told, you're not doing what exactly. you're supposed to be doing. She's like, what am I supposed exactly. to be doing? So she's she's literally being told all yep. of her life that she is crazy, stupid, not exactly. good enough. Like literally being told By all her the time. parents, by her sisters, which yep. is the point that I want to make because they pack up her middle sister, her next oldest sister, Kenya. Kenya? K- Kenya? Kenya? Kenya. K-A-N-I-A. Yeah. Kenya. And she goes off to marry the same prince. And they go to visit her, and Mara sees kind of how she's living and how afraid she is of this 
Prince Vorling, who turns out is a dick. I mean, just really yeah. a terrible person. Terrible <laughs> like, person. really bad. The yeah. worst. Yeah. So, uh... Like, Mar- the worst. And it's funny, because when I saw him, I immediately thought of the portrait of Dorian Gray. Me too! Gray. Me too! That is exactly what I like, thought. Yes. instantly. Instantaneous. Yeah. Instantaneously yeah. thought that, okay, there is a picture somewhere that is old and yep. crusty. 100% that is what I also thought. So I feel vindicated. <laughs> <laughs> and validated and all of those things because I had the same exact thought. Like, literally about that. Totally. And I'm kind of disappointed it I didn't go that way, but I really... That's where I like, thought it was headed, ooh. though. But, yeah. Well, excellent uh, red herring. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I really thought that's where it was headed and then it goes in a completely different direction. Um, but, yeah, so Mara sees how her sister is living and... No. I'm not, I'm not dealing, I'm not putting up with this. This is not okay. Someone needs to do something. Yeah, Mara's like, you know what? I am in this convent, but who says I have to stay there? Exactly. Like, she's not a nun. She's not a nun. She never said any vows. Nope. No one is, there's no guard. There's nope. no one forcing her to be there. And so she just says, well, fuck this. And she leaves. Yep. And she goes and finds a dust wife. And she's like, hey. I need to kill a prince. <laughs> the dust wife is like, the fuck you do? <laughs> the dust wife is like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. I yeah. just want to sit here and raise my chickens. I know one of them has a demon inside of it, but I can deal with that. Yep. But- Couldn't put it in the rooster because that's how you get basilisk. That so, cracked me you know. up. Mara's like, why is there a demon in the hen? And the dust wife is like, well, I can't put it in the rooster. That's how you get basilisk. <laughs> I know. Like, that's her answer. Such, not, a, such a practical not response. Else. I know. It was so good. I loved the dust wipe. I thought she was so good. She was so sassy. And I loved it. <laughs> but yeah, she's like, I'm just going to give this woman three impossible things. She's never going to be able to do them. I will never see her again. And this is what she did. Like, when people came to her for things that they needed or wanted... She'd be like, do these impossible things. They're like, well, I can't do that. So I guess I don't get this thing. Well, and, and Mara's then, like, nope, I'm going to do these impossible Mara's things. Mara's like, I am just fucking determined. I'm going to do it. And the dust wife is like, well, shit. Yep. Yep. Fine. And, yep. And so they go off together. Like, the dust wife is like, I'm going to bring my chicken that's well, that's possessed because like, I can't leave it I here. Told, Mara's like, you said to give me the tools. And the dust wife was like, I'm your fucking tool. Yeah, exactly. She goes, it's me. <laughs> I'm the tool. Let's go. God damn it. And she's like, but why are you bringing your chicken? It's like, well, it'd be rude to leave someone else to deal with it. There's a demon in it. Yeah, she's like, I can't just leave it here unsupervised. Someone's got to take care of it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I love her so much. I know. The dust wife is like my favorite. I love her so much. I know. So good. Oh, my God. So the dust wife <laughs> takes Mara to the goblin market. The goblin market. Because they're going to get a moth that is going to lead them to what they need. Yes. And this is where they pick up their next companion as well. Fenris! Who, who is Fenris. He's a knight. After and, the tooth extraction. Do you remember the tooth extraction? It I was, was upsetting. Yeah, I was just going to say it was very upsetting. Uh, I didn't like it. It was like a pelican or a stork or something, too, which yes. was also and at first weird. I thought it was just going to pull the tooth out, but that's not what happened. No. Every tooth in her mouth, like, vibrated in yeah. a very upsetting way. It was, I, it was probably the most upsetting scene in there for me. I which think is, so. Which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't I like it. I was not happy with that. No, I didn't I like it. I think the tooth scene was the most, ugh, yeah, of yeah. the whole, of all the scenes. Yeah. I didn't enjoy that scene. That was the worst ones. But she does it. Like, Mara decides she has to save this guy because he's not being treated well. She's like, I can't. Well, he was essentially a slave at a collar on. He was just yeah. back, she, you know? She was like, I can't just leave knowing this guy is going to be here for however long being a slave. Like, this is not okay. Again, she's just like, nobody's going to do anything, so I'm going to do it. You want one of my teeth? Fine. <laughs> like, <sighs> great. So, yeah. That yeah. Was... yeah. So, Fenris goes with them. And um, the moth takes them. Where does the moth take them? It takes them to a safe haven, doesn't it? No. Oh. It doesn't. The moth takes them to Fenris. Oh, that's right. That's right. 
The safe then, haven is later. Th- yeah. yeah. The safe haven is from Agnes. That's right. <laughs> Agnes, the other one I just really adore. <laughs> Who is a god is the godmother for all of the daughters. Yeah, Mara's Mara's sisters, yes. their their family. Agnes yes. has been the one to bless them yes. at their birth. Which is super ironic because Agnes is not very she's not very good at blessings, but she is she's very good at curses. Absolutely. And um the the she curses this poor chick. This yeah. chick like an actual chick from a chicken. Yep. To find a safe haven or it will die. Yep. So it does. It finds a safe haven, which is an inn. Yep. With a really upsetting... This was also upsetting. Margaret and her cursed child. Yes, which is basically a puppet, a marionette. So, I, so what happens in this world is if there's a very lonely child and there's a toy that they love, this toy becomes their own personal god, essentially. And it becomes very... Like, they pour all their fears and their loves and all of... It, they just talk to it and they become very attached to it. And at some point... By some stroke of luck or magic, somehow it comes alive. Yeah, and it becomes their own personal. It's attached to them. It doesn't. It's not. It doesn't talk to anybody else or anything. Yeah, and it's it will. It chokes her. It's disturbing. Every, it's upsetting. Yeah, it's very disturbing. And they're like sitting there having a conversation with her, and this marionette is pulling on this rope that's tied around her neck, like just pulling on it. Anytime it thinks that if there's any danger that they will separate yep. the puppet from oh. Margaret, it chokes her. Yeah. It's it's very upsetting. And and it's it's interesting because Mara in particular is upset by this. She was yes. like, We need to save her. And the Dust Wife is like, Okay, let me show you. Let me show you what happens when I save her. And she separates them. And Margaret chooses to have the puppet reconnect. Yeah. She chooses to have this I don't even know what thing. to call it thing attached to her, yeah. making her decision like yeah. It was No, it, they very can only gross. separate them. Like it's the that's why it says we can only separate them if Margaret chooses. Yep. It's her choice. And Margaret said no. Yeah. And she runs she runs like a kind of like a hostel. Mm-hmm. For travelers, and surprise, surprise, not a lot of people choose to stay there because it's creepy. <laughs> creepy as fuck. <laughs> and like Mara's like, what if that thing decides to kill us in our sleep? And then that's why it's like, eh, odds are, can't odds are small. Yeah, like it can't really it's do anything on its her. own. Yeah, it's really only about her. <laughs> and Mara's just like, Ugh. yeah. Mara's like, I don't like anything about this. <laughs> but it's also the first time that we see. Fenris and Mara talk to each other. Yeah, the, yeah, a little bit of a little bit of romance. Yeah, it's it's definitely the romance is definitely subtle and it's it's not the main focus for sure. It's but, not, and it's not even romantic. It's more just no. like budding friendship. Yeah, connection. Yeah, I thought it was Which very cool. sweet though. Yeah. So that was that was nice because I mean a lot of the book Mara's like I have no interest in marriage I have no interest in kids like I'm happy on my own she's a thirty something woman she's like I'm great I've got my independence <laughs> I'm seeing how my sister's being well, treated I'm like no thanks <laughs> well we learn a little bit about Fenris too yeah and because both both Mara and Fenris had pretty decent parents they did not realize a lot of the suffering that other people had at the hands of their own parents yep and Fenris learned shockingly yeah that other kids did not fare so well yeah and he didn't listen yeah when a kid expressed their fear yep and the kid ends up dying yes and his reaction was justified in my opinion i agree he killed the dad yep just like the fuck but and now there are consequences he hid out in a fairy hill he went to the that. fairy hill to be judged. Yes. He went true. to the fairy hill to be judged because he knew that technically killing this guy was wrong. But 
he goes to the fairy hill and ends up in the goblin market. And that's where he was when Mara and yeah. the dust wife found him. Yeah. <laughs> they're now a troop of four. <laughs> and they're like, how the fuck are we supposed to get into a castle and kill a prince? And Mara goes, don't worry about it. My sister's pregnant. She's going to give birth any day. Like, we're going to just, I'm going to be invited. We're going to go and we'll figure it out. I, get, I, I deliver babies. That's what I do. Exactly. And, and everyone's like, um, okay. But that doesn't really feel like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> so they decide to go visit. They go, it's like, I should find. And so Agnes is like, I should go talk to the grandmother. Yes. Like, you know, grandmother or grandmother. The godmother. Or the godmother. Yeah, 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 yeah. Godmother to godmother. Yeah. And everyone's kind of like, Agnes. Really? I mean, that's why they brought Agnes along is because this godmother was in the picture. To be fair, Agnes seems a little. Flighty. She is a little flighty. Well, Agnes... So Agnes's kind of flaw is that she does not recognize... That, like, she will not use her greatest strength. She refuses yes. to use her greatest strength. Yes. And I don't... I can't blame her. Like, I don't blame her either. She wants to be good. She wants to bless people. But yes. that is not what her power is good for. Her power is to curse people. And it sucks. Yeah. And, like, this is part of her growth is acknowledging yes. that that's what she's good at and, like, kind of using those powers for for good yeah. in the greater scheme of things, but acknowledging that that's what she has to do. But so she's like, you know, I'm a godmother. She's a godmother. Yeah. I'm just going to go be like, hey, I heard you're a godmother. Yeah, let's, ta- let's, <laughs> let's just, you know, bond about the fact that we're godmothers. <laughs> and it's weird. It's weird when they see the godmother. It is. Because she basically has blessed this this royal family with immortality in a way. Well, she did. The king, way back when, a few generations like, back, like one of the first kings of was this country, like, bound her to the royal family. It was not something that the grandmother intentionally. Godmother. The godmother. I keep saying grandmother. I know. Sorry. Um. <laughs> The godmother intentionally did. Right. That was not her goal. She did not want to live forever. She did not want immortality. No, absolutely not. She was forced. Forced. To do this. And in order to do this, she is drawing on the energy of the royal family. So the so the male heirs of this family die young. All of them die oh. young. Because she is drawing on them to keep herself alive so that she can keep the next generation alive it's pretty fucked up it's very fucked up (laughs) so this woman is pretty ready to die at this point she's been alive for way too long way too long she is barely there yes but the additional side but the other side effects of this is that she's also said there's a warding you have no additional magic you're protected from any additional curses enemy curses and usurpers. So they're pretty much like protected eternally as long as she draws breath. Yep. So uh, basically they have to kill this godmother in order to kill the prince. Yes. And there's not really a way to do it. (laughs) So they go to see this godmother and she basically is like, I don't really want to be here either. Like, I hope you figure it out. (laughs) But at the same time, she draws Mara into this conversation about this tapestry. And Mara's like... And it's an ugly-ass tapestry. It's so ugly. And Mara's going, this is the ugliest thing I've ever fucking seen. And then she feels like she's been used and spell cast. And she's like, I don't know why she showed me. And then she's like, you should take this tapestry. And she gives it to her. Yeah. like, I don't want this ugly-ass tapestry. And I feel like, why are you giving me this? And I feel like, what is the point of this? I don't want it. But she takes it she because does. it's polite. She, she's polite. Yep. She's, she's like, well, I, I guess I have this ugly ass tapestry now. Yay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with this tapestry. It's fucking ugly. Thanks. Yep. And so they leave this godmother and they're kind of like reconvening and they're like, what do we do? Like, how can we find answers for how to break this bond between the first king and the godmother? And the dustwife is like, we have to talk to the first king. Yeah. I talk to dead people. 
I I talk to dead people. That's what I do. <laughs> like I basically am a grave witch. Like I'm your I tool, do. man. Yep. Let's go. So they go into the tombs underneath the castle. The crypt. The royal Yeah. Where the royals are buried. And they encounter the thief wheel. Which made me think of Labyrinth. Yes, one hundred percent. Absolutely. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was intended, but all I can think of was Labyrinth. <laughs> me too. And it man like most people manage to evade it except for Mara. Mm-hmm. And Mara gets kind of scooped up in this thief wheel that's down there to make sure that nobody who's unauthorized is down there, basically. Well, this is after, though, they find the really irate mistress of one of the kings. And then, because Mara's separated now, because she was in this thief wheel situation, (laughs) uh, she realizes the tapestry actually has a secondary purpose. Yes. It's it's a map. map. It's a map of the tombs. God her sneaky ass bitch, is like, (laughs) hey... I made a map for you. You should take this with you. Wink, wink, nudge, <laughs> nudge. nudge. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I did. Oh, it's so good. And so I Mary's like, it. I'm just going to follow this map. And then she <laughs> like pops out next to where everybody is at this boat. And the dust wife is like, hey, it's you. You found us. And everyone, and she's like, you, the, the thief wheel landed on you. Yeah. And she's like, eh, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Yes, but this was the thing, is that because Mara wasn't there to steal, I think it let her go, or something like that, right? Yeah, she wasn't was something a thief. Where, like, yeah, her, her intentions were not to take anything. Like, she mm-hmm. she was like, I literally don't want anything from here. This is like, I don't want to be here either. <laughs> I really don't want anything, guys. I really don't want to be here. And Please so it just kind of spits her out, like, whoa, okay. <laughs> She's just finding loophole after loophole after loophole. I know. <laughs> Mara yeah. is literally, swear to God, I'm not here to steal the gold and silver. I could not <laughs> care less. <laughs> I don't want what everybody else wants. I just want to kill the fucking ghost of the king, okay? I, know. I don't want to steal anything. I am the black sheep. I am not like everybody else exactly exactly (laughs) oh my gosh so good i love it so much and like she finds herself in these situations and she's just like no but that's not what i want they're like oh okay (laughs) (laughs) you're free to go then (laughs) whatever okay oh my god oh my god so they find the king yep and he's all old and crusty and bitter Yep. As an old white man is. Uh, yep. He was the boomerest of boomers. He was. Such a boomer. He really was. If you could yeah. just, like, take the essence of boomer. Yeah. And put him into the ghost of that king, that's what. That's he, what it was. That's Fisher what he did. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Yep. Nailed it. Yep. And the dust wife yelled at him a lot. Yep. And then made him go. Yep. And then. The god, the godmother showed up. <laughs> Just showed up. Yep. She's like, well, I felt him go, and I thought I'd come and say goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just like, okay. I thought I'd ha- I would like some tea before yeah. I go, and you're just like, what the? Fuck? <laughs> like she's literally falling apart. Yeah. She yeah. She's literally like pieces of her are falling off. At, at this point, I'm getting, like, Dark Crystal vibes. Yes. It's, yes. like, literally all of my childhood movies. In one book. In one book. Yep. Like, totally Dark Crystal vibes. Yep. Like, she's just falling, like, pieces of her are falling off. There's just bone underneath. Yeah. And she's like, Agnes, could you hand me some tea? And Agnes is like, of course. And Agnes is crying. Yep. And I'm just like, whoa. I know. I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then she dies and just <sighs> falls apart. And it's sad, but it's not. Like, it's sad because she was forced to do this thing and yes. live for so long. And you're yes. just like, oh, my God, that was horrible. But then she finally dies and you're like, well, it's sad that you didn't get to live your own life. But I'm happy that you're now not here. I'm happy that the curse has ended. Yeah, you're free now, which it's, makes me happy. I didn't know her well enough to be sad personally. It was bittersweet, I felt like. Yes. Because of the lost potential. 
Also, like there's a pile of dust on the floor. It's kind of weird. Yes, that too. Yes, that was those like Buffy vibes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm still I'm still getting like Emperor from Dark Crystal vibes. Though, no, too, that's so fair. That's fair. Yeah. It was it was a little weird for me. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> but then they're like, well, I guess now we can kill the prince. Yeah. So now so they're like, they, okay. They go upstairs, and and now at this point, Kenya or Kanya or whatever her name uh-huh. is, the sister has mm-hmm. had a baby, is a healthy baby, and everybody's celebrating. It's the christening, except for Mara, who knows they are now on borrowed time. Yes. Because now that she has delivered a healthy, yes. happy baby, her sister's life is in real danger because he doesn't need her anymore. Mm-hmm. And so the timetable has moved up significantly. Like, they do not have time to fuck around anymore. <laughs> like, it is like, and, now like she's up by her sister just like, you need to shut up. Yep. You don't say anything. Yep. I know more than you do right now. Yep. And you do not say one word. One word. Not one, not one word. And the prince is like, where is the godmother? She needs to be here. Yep. What is happening? And he's pissed off and yelling. And he's pissed off and yelling like men do. That's how he does all the time. And Mara's like, oh, it's all fine. (laughs) Great. The the godmother's here. And then fucking Agnes. Yep. Pulls out her evilness, like yep. fucking Maleficent. Yep. And transforms into this giant being with like green eyes of fire. Yep. <laughs> and like comes storming in to this amphitheater. And like everyone's like, ooh, <laughs> ah. And Borling's like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I will bless this child. And all is all <laughs> evil and like creepy. And, and Mara's like, oh, look. I'm godmother. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we lucky that this godmother showed up? <laughs> and and, and her sister's like, oh, in history. are we? And Kanye's like, the fuck is happening? And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Just go with it, okay? <laughs> and then, and then, because everyone's looking at the big green-eyed monster over here, Fenris was just like, I stabbed thee. Pretty much. He just walks up to the princess like, you're dead now. I know. And stabs him. I know. And the princess is like, ha ha, you can't stab me. And then he's like, oh, wait, no, that actually doesn't feel good. He dies. <laughs> and he dies. And everyone's like, what? Yeah. But then they arrest Fenris. They do. They do. Now, this is actually one of the most realistic things. Agreed. Of this book. Yeah, I agree. Because in, like, other fantasy novels, people would be like, the queen let, you know, give a pardon, and he was released, or whatever. That is not what would fucking happen. No. No, the sister goes, she's like, yes, arrest this man! He killed the prince! I sentence you to uh, being buried alive in the tombs! Get down there, fool! I know! Because that's actually what would fucking happen. She has to secure her place as queen. And in order to do that, she has to condemn the king's killer to death. That is actually what would have to happen. But she's smart enough to know that if he is uh, buried alive, quote unquote, in the tombs, they can get him out. Yeah. I mean, she's not stupid. Yeah. So she's like, yeah, I'll just bury him down there. Wink, wink. Like, yeah. go get him. Like, <laughs> well, she's like, Mara, go get this fucking Fenris. Exactly. And she solidifies her power and she becomes queen. And it is fucking awesome. Go women. Yeah. Go women. Yeah. So good. It was amazing. It was so good. And then and then the dust wife and Agnes end up living together and it is adorable. Bickering old ladies. It. it was so oh, amazing. Oh, so good. So good. <laughs> it's awesome. I know. I love them. They're so funny. And Fenris and Mara end up together. Yeah, it's at very least, sweet. At least, as we, at least we assume. Yeah, it's very sweet. Um, I kind of feel like this is like a T. Kingfisher kind of thing, because um, in Sword Heart, which is another one of her kind of cozier books, it's this, th- this, the romance is there, but it's like just kind of underneath it. It almost feels like an afterthought. You know, it doesn't, romance is not something that has to be the forefront of everything. No, and it's just sweet. It's just a sweet little addition where you're just like, oh, I'm so happy they found someone. Like, they're not alone anymore. And it doesn't need to be more than that. Like, that's fine. That works for me. And, you know, 
it's it's so often and I know in a lot of like I'm on book talk a lot and people put so much focus on the romance aspect of it Mm -hmm. but part of feminism part of independent women is the fact that you do not need a partner exactly to do things yeah exactly I, you know, and you, a partner's fine. There's Absolutely. nothing wrong with having a partner. Absolutely not. And it took a group of four to do this. Yep. But it is not, it should not be. The romance aspect does not need to be. No. The focus of a book. Absolutely not. I agree. I, I loved how this book handled all of it, to be honest. It handled, because Mara starts out so timid and and unsure of herself and by the end of the book she's like no i've got this i know i can handle this i know that i can make the decisions that need to be made i know that i can do this well because she's been told her whole life that she wasn't making the right ones exactly her whole life you're doing that wrong you're doing that wrong you're doing that wrong like (laughs) she couldn't do anything right so she just stopped trying at some point you're like okay well i guess i just won't do anything because i can't do anything right i know and then by the end of the book, she's like, no, I, I'm doing this the way I want to do it. And I don't care if you like it or not. But also you can stay because you're handsome and I like you. <laughs> well, I guess you can hang out. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> That's kind of how it is. It's I like, know. Yeah. All right. I guess you can stay. <laughs> I gotten kind of used to you being around. So, <laughs> but I really, I, I really did enjoy this book. It's one of my favorite books. I, I really liked it. I thought it, it was super cute. It, it had so many different fairy tale elements woven yeah. through it, while at the same time being completely original. Yes, exactly. And that's what made it enjoyable. I absolutely agree. It wasn't just a retelling. No, definitely not. It was a new story that drew on elements from a lot of different fairy tales. Yep. Or movies, modern movies. It just it drew on all of these different things that reminded you of different things yeah like it made you go but huh that's reminiscent of this but it wasn't that's not what it was but it wasn't wasn't just regurgitating yeah it was very original yeah it was very creative yeah i really enjoyed it i definitely think you should all read it because it's really good absolutely 100 percent. recommend do read i mean i know we spoiled it for you so if you haven't read it yet well (laughs) You shall. You still should because it's better when you read it. <laughs> you were warned. I don't know. You know. I don't exactly. Know exactly. <laughs> so next time we're gonna read Cushiel's Dart by I Jacqueline Carey. This is my favorite is... book of like all time. I have a, it's my one tattoo is because of this book. Yeah, and uh, it makes sense to me because I also love this book. The th- the first three in that series, so good, so yeah. good. I can't wait to talk about it. All right. Well, I am Daniela Drake. I'm Evelyn Crow. And this has been Intoxicated Literature. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Intoxicated Literature. Drink well, friends.